everybody welcome it's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on i just had a i had a really kind of fun conversation with one of our other hosts today uh susan susan Denae. What, what an incredible show she has right but her brand is really super really super cool um we've been working with her to help to elevate her brand she's working on a book um a lot of exciting things but it's fascinating when i thought about it because i was talking with her and we were talking about Benny and Jacob and Olivia, what we were talking about yesterday, that moment with uh, Will Smith and Chris Rock. And her entire message explains it. So when you're Susan and you got a brand called No K-N-O-W, You're Crazy, and that is your deal, that is understanding the crazy, like in all of us. Like, and she works with women and recovery, people that are down and out, corporate executives, teams, she works with them all. And we were having an interesting conversation about that because that was, a, even when I was talking about it yesterday, I couldn't describe it, but that was an interesting issue because we were saying, you know what? Like Susan, if you were working with Will Smith, you to help them understand what is crazy was going on there right up to that point. And maybe we could have changed it. However, and I want to say, however, and there may have been something deeper going on there. There may have been, hello, like a deja vu moment from his past, like way past, maybe like another life past, where something got triggered in him. And he was having a deja vu moment. Maybe he was having a deja vu moment about how threatened he may have felt in a different situation, maybe a different life, maybe a different whole, different, like whole everything moment. And he became overcome with a spontaneous combustion. And he's probably scratching his head because he's trying to figure it out in today's world. And maybe he needs Dr. Shelley care. Maybe he needs to have a conversation with Dr. Shelley. Maybe he needs to pick up the phone and say, hello, blast from the past just caused you to catapult yourself out of a seat and do something uncharacteristic to you. See, that's what blast from the past, that's what, that's what Dr. Shelley's like doing. Because there are moments in our lives. I mean, Susan and I were talking about this. We have, we've known each other a long time. We have the same recovery journey. Uh, not the same, but we have similar things. And so one of the things that shows up is spontaneous combustion on the inside and out. And we think it's like from a comment. Hello, not. Today, I want to introduce you to someone that is going to give us a dose what I call a crust busting dose. You can actually, Benny, we can actually consider this show crust busting. So you may have to get the jackhammer thing out. But we are going to take you on a journey that says when you combine, like Dr. Shelley's method, when I love this, I could actually see a diagram of this, that like how she does it, like almost like a hologram. Energy work, hypnosis, you put that all together, and then you take the past life perspective on it. What you're about to get from that, if you work with somebody like Dr. Shelley, Dr. Shelley Care, if you work with her, if you work with the past life lady, that's like what she, I didn't make that up. That's like what she is. She's past life lady. If you do that, what might you discover? Dr. Shelley, great to have you. Dr. Pat, this is so cool to be with you. And I have to say crust busting. I need to add that to my resume, man. This is awesome. And yeah. I hadn't thought about, you're so right though, about like what would propel Will Smith, who we've loved to jump up out of his seat like that. Yeah, I, hadn't thought, I hadn't even thought of that, but you're exactly right because this is what's happening. We're getting triggered by things and we're behaving uncharacteristically or we're having weird stuff happen and we just don't know why. So it's a very interesting point. I want to talk to you. Can I just hit you up on near-death experience conversation for a moment? 
Sure. I love that there are some people, because I want to talk about this for a minute. Um, I, I love that we are now having a closer look at what we call NDEs. So you remember back in the day when somebody, I don't know who it was, to be honest with you, it could have been like somebody, but somebody said, this is an NDE. And if it doesn't fit this, it's not an NDE. So the right. way that uh, NDE, for those of you out there, I'm sorry, I do a show with Mark Anthony on Thursday. So like Mark Anthony is like the after like, you know, the psychic and the doc show. So I've learned all these acronyms, right? I'm a great student. I love to be a student. I'm so coachable, actually. But I brought somebody on that show because not every experience takes you to the light, right? And so I've loved the evolution of this because now more and more people are starting to look at things differently. You know, they're starting to see things. And some people don't actually have to be brought back by a heart, by a, you know, like an electronic, right? You see what I'm saying? Right. Some people, one day they're sitting in a chair and the next thing they're in an emergency thing and they don't remember anything about how they got there or what happened. And then all they know, they wake up and they say, I'm different. Now, let's talk about that, NDEs, your experience with it, and how it all ties in to blast from the past. Yeah, it's a great point, Dr. Pat, because um, I've been friends with Dr. Raymond Moody for over 20 years now. So he's heard this story years ago when it first, <laughs> when it was a lot newer to me. Um, and he, even then he did acknowledge it, but certainly I did not get into a car accident. I did not have the defibrillator or the ambulances or anything. But um, many years ago, I, I, I've been doing more personal reflection lately about things that happened in the deep past at this point, because I'm like you, I'm a lifelong student and I'm sorry, if we're still here, then we better be looking into ourselves and learning new things. So I've been right. thinking a lot about these things lately. i had had, um, let's say a long series of weird events. I, I had stage four endometriosis. I recovered from that. I started having a feeling that I was going to leave my cushy job and move to Colorado. And sure enough, that manifested itself in a, a marriage that happened for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> Got married, went over there. We had a good time, but it didn't work out. So I moved out. And during this time, I started becoming um, really um, a little bit isolated. I was isolating myself. I was hearing the inner voice. I started hearing the inner voice tell, tell me there was something wrong with my heart and I was not going to live much longer, even though I have no medical problems other than I had had endometriosis. So one night, no... Well, in between then, I had also gone to Egypt and Greece, and I think there was a triggering there as well. Like I said, it's a lot of multidimensional things that were going on. So one night I just lifted up and I went into a light, a room of light. I saw some beings and the only real person that I recognized there was my uh, paternal grandmother. Uh, because when I was born in this life, I was deathly ill and my parents were actually told to take me home because I was going to die. There was nothing else they could do for me. And right after that, my paternal grandmother just passed away out of the blue. And then I made this miraculous recovery. So when I went into the light, she was there. And now I'm doing a lot of ancestral healing work. And so I understand now it's taken me a while because um, even I have to, <laughs> I don't always get it at first that my, my grandmother must be one of my spirit guides. Yeah. You know, I didn't know, I'd never really consciously thought about that until recently, but um, when I was there, then it was all like, that is when it becomes a little bit more akin to what other people report. It was all very cerebral. Yeah. It was kind of like, okay, you're at a point in your life. We're going to send you back. And then I started having this energy just running through my body. I didn't know what this was. I, I started just knowing how to do things. And that's when I first understood that this idea that if I was going to take people into hypnosis, which I ended up doing later, that these thoughts are stuck energetically in our field and they have to be addressed also. And so I came back from that. Um, everybody thought I was having a nervous breakdown. I was living in Colorado at the time I moved back to Texas and I ended up, I was very sensitized to sounds and I didn't feel like I was ready for prime time, but I'm also very productive. So that's when I started going back to school um, took Reiki classes, yeah. took energy classes. I went to um, 
University of North Texas and I enrolled in a bunch of psychology classes, probably because I needed a psychologist. Um, and then during that time, my parents actually found this program at the American Institute of Holistic Theology, which is to get a doctorate in energy medicine, which is what I ended up doing, mainly because to me, when you're taking classes, you're actually learning. Hello. Just like when you work with clients, you're learning because we're the students here. I mean, yeah. you know, hello. And so this really helped me get some things um, back together. And then through that, then I began helping others. And it was really the past life regressions at some point that really put it together for me yeah. because one of my friends had been killed in a hiking accident. I saw his ghost in the, in the window. This is why I write so many books. There's lots of stories. And I was so overcome with grief because I was 25 years old. I had never even had been to a funeral before. So the regression process made me realize that him and I knew each other. We've known each other in the past. He tends to die prematurely and leaves me here feeling like there might've been something I could have done. There isn't anything I could do. So I can let that yeah. go now. And I recovered um, from this, this unresolved grief and all this other stuff that was going on so um, profoundly. Like I just had a complete paradigm shift. Like I was like, oh, I think I can let this go now. That's when I first realized I have to start doing this for others. And then this obviously evolves into the fact of what you're saying about even what happened yesterday or whatever with Will Smith the other night is, yeah, we're, we're being bombarded, Dr. Pat. And we're no, not is aware it. of it. Well, this is why I wanted to have this conversation begin it with you, because we're talking about blast from the past. We're talking about a book, but we're talking about you being the ambassador of allowing people to understand spontaneous past life memories. And I love that spontaneous past life memories, right? Um, uh, I just like made an acronym for it. I mean, it's like, I'm like SPL, right? Okay. SPLM. Okay. Right. I thought it was spam, but then I'm a little bit dyslexic. So it's not spam. It's SPLM. And I started to say, oh my God, oh my God, that's it. Spontaneous past life memories. But it's hard to find somebody that pulls it all together like you. That's why I wanted to ask you that question because so many people are dismissed. Now, mine was a little bit different. Mine really was sitting in a chair, finishing up my dissertation. I don't even know what year that was, uh, but sitting in a chair. Oh, no, no. Sitting in a chair after my dissertation, doing the postdoctoral stuff. And I'm sitting in a room and my little cat that adopted me is sitting there, sitting in the corner and I'm working away. And the next thing I know, I'm in an ambulance going to the hospital. And they said that I called them. Okay. Can I? But what happened as a result of that is they don't look at that like you died. They look at it like you've disappeared for a little bit because it doesn't have all of the flat lining. It doesn't quite have that. You know, you're not in a coma, but it was the most fascinating thing. And, you know, I started to really look at this recently as we interviewed people. There's so many people that are having those experiences. Now, I will tell you, I went a full year, every test on the planet they want, had to give me. Right. They were sure it was something like a neurologic. I mean, I was tested for every disease on the planet, every electronic hookup that you could possibly do because they didn't really understand it. So they're trying to figure out, they were trying to recreate it. Okay, that's fun. Uh, and, and the point that I'm making is when that was over, I was different. I did not go on to become a consultant. I went on to create Crust Busting. It was the first show. I went off in a direction and everybody thought, I lost my mind. But what did I see during that time? What did I see? And, you know, I tried to work with some people about it, but I didn't see the white light. But let's talk about what you write in your book, pa Blast from the Past. Let's talk about this. Because what I started to see were spontaneous past life memories that led to spontaneous future life initiatives. Don't know how, but this happens to a lot of people. And there is so much wisdom if we can acknowledge that maybe that Will Smith moment had nothing to do with this lifetime. Maybe what happened to me had nothing to do with this lifetime. 
Maybe it had to do with a vision I saw when I was about nine years old, walked into my house basement early from school, almost in sepia form, a mother, a daughter, a, a mother, a father, and a daughter, all in like brown sepia, old style clothes, and they looked real. But let's get to you. Let's one talk. question there because I've still got to get to you. So you're but, saying that when you got in the ambulance, you didn't remember calling them? No. That is so they said I They said I was, I had the phone and I called them and I was incoherent and I somehow gave them the address. And I mean, they, they, they showed up, right? Oh. And so... And I don't remember anything about any of that except getting there, waking up, and then having to go through a lot of tests after. But I was different. And this is really the point that I, that I want to really bring, because you have so many stories, right? You talk about trips you took and experiences. And, I, and one of the questions that I always get asked is, why the heck did you pack up from Jersey spontaneously and move to Seattle? Like, why did you do that? You grew up on the East Coast. You know, what it, you didn't even think twice about it, Pat. You sold your home. You had a big truck. You moved to a place that you spent maybe a couple of weeks at with a friend of yours. Why did you do that? Okay, let's talk about the whys. Because past life regression and blast from the past, they help us, right? Yes. Can you talk to the point about the, how blast from the past and how these moments from the past help guide our future and even our present. Yeah, I mean, I've just come to this understanding, Dr. Pat, that just like what happened to you, I, like, why did you move to Seattle? Something within your soul obviously guided you there. And I feel like, you know, a lot of people really are, are really seeking intuitive counsel and advice and things. I, I feel that many people, and I've done this as well, you know, we ignore the things that we're getting, um, we dismiss them, but if we would really quiet and just think about what are the impulses that we're receiving, the guidance that we're getting to move or to take this job or to engage with certain people, et cetera, really is coming from a very deep place within our soul. Um, whether it's from a past life influence. I, I really do believe in soul groups. I believe that a lot of the people we're meeting in this life, we've probably interacted with before. I believe we have certain plans of things we wanted to do and we planned this out somewhat before. I mean, of course, there's still surprises. There's still room for growth, but that some of the big things we're planning here, we probably you know, thought about that before we arrived. And so the universe and our guides and God and spirit, however you perceive that, is giving us these clues and nudges through either wonderful feelings, like you and I connecting, it's like, oh, wow, an old friend, or, oh my gosh, I just saw this person. And now for some reason, they haven't even opened their mouth, but I think I'm going to run kicking and screaming down the street in the other direction. Um, or just impulses, you know, and I feel like we need to pay more attention to our feelings and how we're really feeling. And I think that's a very challenging yeah. thing to ask people to do in a world where we're very, as you know, bombarded with input and overwhelmed much of the time. And I love this. Let's talk about what you call it in the book. There are a couple of things you call in the book. And I love your, uh, like the survey that you introduced in the beginning of the book. Um, but you call something a soup Retrovy. Is that yes, correct? A soup okay. retrovy. Okay. But when I read about that, it was like, oh my gosh, I think I had that geographical thing because I visited Seattle. It felt like home. I extended my stay there and I moved there. And I had the same experience in Hawaii. I didn't actually move there. But Seattle, it was like I went back home, took my GREs, hadn't even been accepted to school yet got a U-Haul, sold my house, got an apartment, and I'm off I went. How else would you explain that? Now, the, your friends and family say you're having a midlife crisis, but uh, to be honest with you, you know, Dr. Shelley, it didn't feel like a midlife crisis to me. I love it. I've had so many midlife crises, Dr. Pat. I hear you. Um, yeah, the friends and family, you know, they always mean well. They want to protect us. But, you know, to me, it's it's an awakening of the soul. I think these things are happening at particular times. And in your case, yeah, you you had the faith to move out there. You didn't 
theoretically, you didn't know what was going to happen, but of course it all works out. And I think it works out when you're following that inner guidance. And sometimes, unfortunately, that inner guidance goes against what normal people, and I, I'm definitely not one of those, but um, <laughs> what they would counsel us as, you know, things that make sense or things that logical normal people would do. Um, a lot of the things that we have to do as souls just don't really coincide with those typical rules of society. And yeah. you're right. Like you could go to a place, you fall in love with it. There's no reason, right? You've never been there. You've been there for two minutes, but there's something deeper there. And so that has to be, I think, acknowledged if it can be. I mean, I think we should just open to these things and you certainly have. And then look at this. I mean, here you are. I mean, it's, yeah. it's worked out wonderfully. But the whole thing and the way it worked out is a much longer story, but the pieces of it are very similar. Dial a wrong phone number. Say, I mean, there's just so many different Long pieces. Phone number. Exactly. And, you know, that's why when I read what you, what you, when you talk about deja vu, let's have a deja vu conversation then for a minute. There's that famous line in The Matrix, the movie is The Matrix, the first movie, I think it is. And there's that famous line with the cat. And the cat walks by, and then Keanu Reeves uh, looks at the cat and says, uh, oh, deja vu. And then everybody's like, deja vu, like, that means there's a change in the matrix. See, when I think about that, I think about your deja vu versus uh, 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 super retrovy, right? And let's talk about that a minute because there's this idea of, oh my gosh, I feel like I've been here before. Or I just, I remember you just saying that an hour ago and you really didn't say it an hour ago. Can you explain deja vu ber versus what you call this super retrovy? Yeah, it's a great um, point. I have always experienced deja vu um, when I've heard it. People, you know, people write me letters or I hear it from from this conversations like the one we're having now or in my own life that deja vu would mean, let's say you and I went to have a coffee together and we're sitting in a coffee shop and you said something and I suddenly go, oh, wow, I felt like we've had this. <laughs> we've been in this exact moment in this current lifetime having this exact conversation. And normally these these tend to be things that are repeats of things that are happening in current reality, where it's a repeat, whereas a supretrovi is something, it's a blast from the past. It's coming in out of nowhere like a comet and it's just smacking us. We haven't seen it before. Um, sometimes with the geographic ones, people will travel to different places. And again, it doesn't have to be anything exotic. They could go to the next town over, walk into the town square or something, and suddenly modern buildings are actually fading away and they're seeing how things look like in the 1800s or something, or they're hearing yeah. sounds that are not happening of wars and battles that are non-existent at that moment. So it's different than deja vu because to me, deja vu is a repeat. And it's more like you said, like a glitch in the matrix. Yeah. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk Plato. And because, you know, I've taught Plato before, but there are, there are things about Plato which I really get me excited and there are things not. But the things that Dr. Shelley has put in her book and the way that she is talking about Plato and about soul, let's just talk about soul recollection. Hello, that, that is something I think everybody listening to this show or list, that listens to the Transformation Network shows, I think you get. But how do you know? You know, how did she first encounter this? How do you know? And let me ask a different question that I'll give Dr. Shelley time during the break to think about. I've been asked to write an article and I haven't written it yet, a chapter in a book. And there's a lot of reasons I haven't. But as I was thinking about what to write, I reflected on how I view my life today. Clearly in my high school book, what everybody wrote and that little thing they fill out, like when you graduate high school, they write little things in a little book. They don't do that anymore. I guess it's all digital. But back in the day, people wrote stuff in your little book. And I came across my little book, like buried in the garage. This girl would be lucky if she made it to 18. We don't know where she's from, but she certainly ain't going anywhere. I mean, if you read some of the stuff. So I sat here the other day thinking about this article for Peggy. And I thought, Em, why am I, in everybody's eyes, the least likely person to ever succeed at anything? 
what was it about my past that showed up that way? And what was it about my past that completely annihilated and denied that concept? I'm not going to answer that. Dr. Shelley is because you know what? Blast from the past, how your past helps cultivate you through a life that you are probably looking at like the most unlikely to fill in your own life. We're going to take a short break. Benny, Olivia, Jacob, we'll be right back. We'll tell you how to get the book. We'll tell you more about this really cool work that Dr. Shelley Care does. And we'll take your call. You, you, want to, you want to talk to her about past life? You want to talk to her at Deja Vu? You want to talk to her about Will Smith? 1-800-930-2819. Give us a shout. Benny, we'll be right back. Hey, everybody, welcome back. So great to have all of you tune us in. Dr. Shelley Kerr is joining me here today. Uh, this is Past Life Lady, and I think we can send them to pastlifelady.com. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. How do we get copies of the book? Tell us about the book, what's available, how do people work with you? Um, the Blast from the Past book is available. Um, if you go to pastlifelady.com right on the homepage, you'll see the links. And there's also a books tab, which will take you over to Amazon to my author page with all of my books there. Um, I, I do have a limited number of private sessions available. Right now I'm teaching a really big class with the Shift Network, um, Past Life and Genealogical Regression. I invented this process called genealogical regression, where we go down into past events that happened to ancestors and send yeah. healing. So there's a link there for that class. It's a seven part video course people can tune into and uh, events and contact page. I have some other classes coming up. And can I ask a question before we hop off? Cause I know sure. we're gonna go crazy here. Um, I know I'm due for my next past life regression. People always ask, well, how are you going to do it, Pat? Can you do things remotely? Do you have to be in person? Um, how have you all adopted your skill? How have you adopted this to more remote sessions or not? Can, can you give us an update on that? I would love to talk about that because okay. um, I started doing regressions professionally back in the very, very early 2000s. And I wrote a book I called know. Lifestream that was endorsed by Dr. Brian Weiss, that he endorsed yep. my method and he used to send me overflow business. So um, I had a lot of national media exposure at that time. And so I've never done in-person sessions since that time because I have clients from all over the world. I've always done them by phone, Dr. Pat. And I I don't understand. I mean, I'm kind of excited that people are catching up to the fact that this can be done because if I'm speaking to you and you're in your private session, your private space, you're actually more comfortable than if you were fighting traffic or whatever. And I'm still speaking to you. You're closing your eyes and you're going into your interior mind. So I've always done it by phone. Um, I do sometimes do Zoom for people overseas, obviously, but um, it's the same way that I've been doing the sessions mm -hmm. for almost 20 years now and that's it right. works that's right and that's what i love about this because you know what we are talking about you and i are here for reasons that we can't maybe you can explain it better than i can but we are here for reasons that i cannot explain to people i can't explain to them where the vision of the transformation network came from we're launching our own TV channel on Roku and other places. Where did those ideas come from? I'm not that I'm not that tech person. It just came. But I live and breathe today knowing that a lot of these notions are not from this life. We have a caller. Let's go to the phone. Let's take our fabulous, fabulous audience member. Benny, who do we have? Naomi calling in from Seattle. Hi, Naomi. How are you? How can we help you today? Uh, hey. Uh Past life information, I guess. Uh, could you speak up a little louder? I would like some past life information. Uh, I'm not sure how that's going to work on the show. Do you have something specific, a specific question? Um, I guess I always have this energy, this feeling that I was a very powerful person in, in a past life, royalty. And mm -hmm. so I was just curious hmm. about it. I think that those feelings come for, for you know, to you for a reason. So yeah, yeah. Um, I, I would feel empowered by that myself if it was me. And I would yeah. just embrace that feeling 
and allow those those feelings of being a powerful person to, you know, move in your life and inform your life. It sounds very good to me. Yeah. And I think that, you know, that's the kind of thing for me that really, uh, you know, Naomi, that's the kind of thing that when you have a notion like that and you don't have the next step. So what does that mean? So like I knew that I wasn't going to be a, a big fat time consultant doing something in corporations that I knew was a lie. But I didn't know that until that experience I just shared with Dr. Shelley. I didn't know that. But I got to tell you, I didn't know what was next. I didn't know what I was going to do with it. It sounds like you may be looking for now what, right, Naomi? <laughs> right. Like now what? Now that I've got this idea that I was real, like feel like a powerful person in a past life, now what? And I think that's the power of doing past life regression sessions. Uh, they provide clues. They provide answers. They may not always provide a specific direction. Like I could not have planned the life I'm living now and what we're about to launch. There is no bleeping way that I could have planned that. No more than Will Smith walking up on the stage and taking a shot at Chris Rock. He did not plan that. And that's why we opened the show with that, because maybe that had nothing to do with this lifetime. Maybe he was uh, what I think Dr. Shelley calls, uh, uh, you know, super, uh, right? Super retro, super retro V. Maybe it was an object. Maybe it was a comment. Maybe it was a feeling that got him to do that. So I'm going to tell you this, Naomi, if you had got that and that thing is calling on you, are you like haunted by that idea? Naomi, are you, is, is this thing, is this like on your mind all the time? Yeah, kind of in the back of my mind. Back of the mind. All the time. I'm telling yeah, you. It, it's, it's not, yeah, it's there. And I yeah. know it's there. And yeah. yeah. You know, it's like, it's like, I don't know if you're a mother. You know, it's like, it's like you got that baby inside of you and you have had that baby inside of you nine months. And the doctor told you, right? This is such a weird analogy. Why am I even doing this? And the doctor said to you, your baby's going to be born. Hello. It's going to be born on December 11th. You're going to, that baby's coming December 11th. And then December 11th comes and the baby's not coming. And it's in here. And it's like, I want to come, but it wants to come out, needs a little coaxing. It's going to come out when it wants to come out, done on December 11th. And it says, no, I do not want to be born as a Sagittarius. That is not my life. I really want to be a Capricorn because I want to be powerful and have a lot of money. And then you get born somewhere between December and January, and you get the best of both worlds because you are the baby that didn't want to be born. But the mother knew the baby needed to come out wanted it to come out it's got to come out so i would my recommendation to you if you don't mind we're going to talk about this right now next we're going to talk about play-doh and a whole bunch of things if that thing stays with you go get yourself some past life regression or some help on it because anything that stays on the vine too long withers okay but you are already that person do you know that can can do I have to really talk to you about the fact that you are already that person? Hello? No. <laughs> no. I mean, do you, can, are you feeling me right and here? I already walked in. Okay, you feeling me right here? Are you able to say this? Yes. Come on, do this with me. <laughs> so can you can you say I am? Go ahead. Uh, I am. It's the rest of it, what you said the thought was in the back of your mind. I'm not going to say it first. You have to say it first. I, I am a powerful person. Okay, come on, say it like you mean it, please. Come on. I am a powerful person. One more time with gusto. Come on. I am a powerful person. Now you got yeah. it. That's going to click. That's going to trigger. I want you to write down for the next 24 hours every idea that comes to you, even if they don't make sense, even if you have no money in your bank account, even if you don't know anybody that you need to know. Next 24 hours, get your post-it notes, get your phone, get a pad. Okay, writing down is old school. I don't care how you do it. You take your phone, you could text yourself. You can record it. 24 hours, you need to do this now. Okie doke. Right. We're having a crust-busting moment here. Hey, for real. Thank no, you. No, for real. Yes. Don't let me break out into a rap song, because I can do that. Benny knows it. <laughs> 
<laughs> you don't have to do that, Pat. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Naomi. Take care. <laughs> Naomi, you better call us back later on in the week. I want to hear from you uh, 24. I want to hear you back from you 24 hours and five minutes from now. Got a call into show. Thank you. Wow. What do you think? So um, let's I, talk Plato because yeah. see a lot of that right there that went on, a lot of what we talked about. And I love, I was so surprised and not surprised how much you use Plato, who I think does not get enough credit for this here. Tell us, people are not knowing what I'm talking about. Can you please talk about how you introduce Plato and then how these ideas carry forth in your own life? to talk to why you're you, Dr. Shelley. Yeah, and I think uh, Naomi's question was perfect segue into what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, in the book, I, I talk about something about Plato that I don't think people remember as well, which is that Plato came up with this concept that he called anamnesis, which is basically defined as a soul knowing. So we've just heard our lovely caller um, call and say, hey, she was a powerful person in the past. So where does she get that idea from? Well, she gets it from the soul. And Plato first identified this, that there are simply some things that are so deeply embedded within our souls that if we're in that quiet, receptive space of listening to our true selves, we just know them. We don't have to be told these things. We just know them. And if we can, as you've guided her through here, just be open to, yes, you were powerful. Just own that and bring forth those gifts of the spirit that are within us. Then we can use those in our current reality to become very empowered. And so this is different again from Supretrovi, which again is a, a comet hitting us, right? A blast coming in um, from some external source, whereas the anamnesis is coming from the soul and from within the depths of the person. And again, I think it's something that every single person has if we are allowing ourselves to quiet down enough to listen and just to own the things that we know about ourselves and just own it and just go out into the world and be that. Okay, come on. We're going to have another crust busting moment from, uh, okay, who? Okay, so I love this. We're going to have another crust busting moment from past life lady. We're going to have it. And the reason I want to talk to you about this is because you do such a beautiful job in the book. And for those of you just tuning in, let me tell you about the book. Let me tell you, get the book, right? Because this is where you begin. What I want to tell you is when you take a look at blast from the past and you take a look at what Dr. Shelley Kara is introducing, what it does is it breaks things down for me not into big, long stories about, you know, the technology or, you know, some of the things that a lot of these books do is they write in language nobody understands like but 1%, 1% of people. But when you read about her trip, when you read about Key West, I had a little thing in Key West too. I hope I got that right. But when you hear about these things and you hear about the stories, and then you watch what the sessions are, like, where are you? I'm on a train. See, this is so beautifully done that you feel like you're in the session and you're thinking, but I feel like that too. How do I get it out? Well, this is how we get it out. So let's, let's talk about how your method, your method, not, not generality is about past life, but how your method allows and enables and empowers people to truly step into it. Because why bother having a thing pop up? Like why bother having a windshield that showed every channel on my network, every piece of it at a time where the technology had not been developed? What was it about that? How did I find Oliver in Germany to build it? And, and how did I know to do it? I don't have that skill. You see? So let's talk about the people that are wondering, I don't know how. How am I going to do it? I don't have the money. Talk about how you bring it all together in your methodology, please. Yeah. I mean, I think historically we've been um, believing and thinking, well, if I want to know who I was in a past life, then I need to go have the regression to find out who I was. But in my thinking, we really kind of know who we are if we just own that. So 
<laughs> um, we just then use the guided imagery, all of my books, not just Blast from the Past, but every book I have, I have the processes in here for readers and listeners and viewers to do this themselves. You could literally take a recording app, record the guided journeys. You're going to go down into meditation and just go into these places and find these answers. Let's say, again, taking the last caller um, who feels that she was powerful in a past life, hold that intention. I show you step-by-step step how to walk in there and say, where does that feeling come from? Let's go to that event. Let's tap into that. And then let's, let's remember the gifts. You know, we all have gifts and talents from past lives. Um, you're, you, every single person watching this and listening to this right now, you have gifts and talents that you've had that just like what we've been describing here, they didn't originate from here. These ideas you had to start your network, Dr. Pat, for example, I mean, where the heck did that come from? You're right. I mean, and, and I, I've had experiences like that myself. If we follow those things, you know, if we will, I think when you get inspiration like that, it's so easy for most people to say, well, that was weird, or, or then we start getting into self-doubt. Well, I could never do that. Well, what if you could, you know, what if you um, pretend, I always use like imagination and pretending, like what if I pretend like I'm a radio show host? What if I contact someone and just ask a question and see if this is even possible? Just start taking those first steps, you know, and then one thing, as you know, after another, after another, you meet the people who help you get things done, even when you have no idea how those things are happening, but these little inklings that we're getting, um, I would just like to encourage viewers and listeners, pay attention to them. You know, many years ago, I had somebody say, you know, Shelly, the difference between you and other people is that you just do the craziest stuff. I mean, if I get an idea, I just go run with it. You know, okay, I'll go start a business or I'll go call these people. Why not? Because I, I feel like those things, as you've said, they're coming from somewhere. So I've always followed those. And I, I can tell you obviously have followed those as well. And I think that yeah. You know, the answers that the viewers and listeners um, seek are within you and they're being shown to you through these, these ideas that are often dismissed. So the book teaches the person how to do for themselves. I'm really into the idea that I'm going to give you these tools. You can go into these spaces yourself, um, open those doors, find the answers to questions. And then one of the other ways that this super retrovy could happen is through objects, artifacts. So, it, you know, if we I go into psychometry exercises where we actually learn how to identify and connect with objects to go back and trace those to um, times in the past when we may have used these things and they helped us um, to how do I identify where I know certain people from. And so, you know, sometimes people are in our lives. I feel they're always in our lives for a reason and they have gifts to bring us. So just paying more attention and really becoming more aware of those random fleeting thoughts that are going through all of our minds. And instead of dismissing them this time, let's pay yeah. attention and take some action. And yeah. then our lives can become truly magical and transformative. Yeah. Um, and the reason I want to bring it up is because there are so many instances that we go through in life that, you know, many people in their going through in life will dismiss because their life doesn't seem that it could go in that direction or another, right? Um, and so part of the conversation is to really understand what you write about in this and really go down that journey. You know, there's so many things I can point to that don't make sense. I mean, I'm, I'm 20, some, maybe not 21, maybe I don't know. And I'm walking down the hall of Bell Labs and I turn to Linda and I say something to Linda like, I'm going to get a PhD. Now, I could barely read or write. And I just looked at her and said, I'm going to get a PhD. And Linda, just the Linda that you know, Linda, who is my producer, looked at me and said, of course you will, absolutely. And we kept walking and I said, what exactly is a PhD? That never left me. Now, it took me a lot of years to get it uh, because I didn't have the courage to act on it. And then the universe aligned and I lost my job after 24 and a half years. And I knew to immediately go back to school. Is that the way sometimes this might work for people? Do things really help and guide us? A thought like that, I didn't know what a PhD, you know how I knew a PhD? I delivered mail at entry level at Bell Labs to people 
that have PhD at the end of their names, Dr. Arno Penzias, Big Bang Arno, who gave bagels every Friday. And these PhDs were so cool. That's why I wanted it. But not love really, it. right? I just not love really. it. Something else from somewhere that I still can't explain today got me here. Isn't that what your book, Blast from the Past, is helping us understand better? Yes, because you heard the inner voice. And then, you know, for whatever reason, maybe it wasn't time. I, you know, I, th I still do believe in some divine timing. So I do too. you were obviously meant to continue, but it was always in the back of your mind so that when that opening came and then you took the action, that's, that's the difference. That's what I think I really want to get across to readers most through the book is just to say, hey, guess what? This happened to me. It's obviously happened to Dr. Pat. It's happening in my mind to everyone. So just be aware of it. And then when those openings happen, take action or just look into things. And you did that. And so that's, that's a, it's a great example. And I, I think ask, everybody can do it. I want to ask you this last question, because I, I am a believer that sometimes stress points in our life help. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? become catalysts to speed things up. What do you think? Because I'm finding these past three years, they were not, they were years that were tough for all of us, tough for us in business, tough for everybody, right? But they were also kind of a catalytic converter for us here at the network. I mean, are there, a, is there a relationship between past life events, trauma and events that will help us see the pathway? I think it's a great point because, you know, it really has been a unique three years. We can rest assured that every single human being alive um, has been affected by the things that have been happening with the pandemic and everything else. So how it's affecting different people obviously varies. And I definitely believe that um, in these times of stress, this is where obviously a lot of terrible things happen. And yet there's a lot of good that comes from that. And, and it has been a transformative time for the society and everything. And so, because people are having to learn, as you've said, like, how are we going to do business in this environment? What are we going to do? How could we make things better or different? And, and we really, um, you know, we're not really ever going to go back to the way things were because we're changed. I mean, it's, it's caused, yeah. You know, I've, I've hit rock bottom several times in my yeah, life oh, and, yeah, I, and yeah. I felt like I'm so thankful that I did that earlier on because then now I'm older uh, and I feel like the, the, the pandemic, I, I, you know, I've been to meditation, silent meditations, and I've had a lot of really different things happen that I felt like I was able to get through those times, but I really felt um, so sorry for, I, I don't mean that in a really a, a bad way, but I mean, I just think it's a lot more challenging for people if they've never had the had to go within or sit still. And I think that's where a lot of the, the eruptions in the society have come from. But as people start to come within and, and you know, have to be with themselves, basically, I think there's a great and positive transformation that can come from that, that we're all, we're all in the middle of it. So it looks very bumpy and difficult, but I know that we're gonna get through this and good things are gonna come. Yeah, I mean, I know we've got a few minutes left and think good things are to come. I mean, past lives, let's just, let me just, may I just say it in this way. I like to think of things in cycles. I don't know why that is. I don't know why my brain does that. I don't know. But the cycles aren't always the way traditionally we look at them. In my mind, a cycle could take 90 seconds. I can go through five phases of something in 90 seconds. But I want to ask you about this because in your book, it is everything you've said but it really is a, a call to action. It really is a way for people to get at the other end of whatever end they're at now. Can you, is that true? I mean, isn't that what your experience is? And isn't that what you see in your clients? Yes, because I think everybody, you know, a lot of the clients that I've had over the years and really people in general, they feel sometimes like they're stuck in certain jobs or relationships or things like that. And they're trying to figure out what are the steps I need to take to get out of the situation into something that's more appealing or more in alignment with soul purpose. And I think that this is coming from these very subtle inklings and ideas and flashes of 
whoa, that was weird, you know, that are happening to us every single day. So it is a call of, to action to, to please honor yourself, to please pay attention to these ideas and don't dismiss them as just simply silly or that could never happen. Just say, what if, you know, just ask the question, what if I made a phone call or asked a question about this thing that just went into my mind, you know, this starts to open up the, a new pathway with new possibilities that will begin to step by step by step, lead people to the places where they want to go. I love it. Look at, thank you for today. Thank you for the work you do. There's so much more we could have talked about because I love how you are integrating so many different things, but in the end, you know, it is like Naomi said, there is a power that comes to us that we can't explain. So I, some days I call it God. Some days I don't know what I call it. But there is a knowing. And what happens sometimes is when we get that knowing, fight or flight, or being. And my life's path has been to learn the power of being. That's what you're telling us in heart and, and really trying to help us with, because if we can be, all the other pieces come into place, don't they? Absolutely. Uh, how do we find out? How do we get the book? And I'd just like to know your personal message and what, what, we, what you'd like to leave us with today. Dr. Pat, first, it's been a complete honor and a joy to connect with you. You are amazing. And so keep crust busting out there. I love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, everything is on pastlifelady.com. I've got a YouTube channel. So if people want to see some free shorter regressions and try those, give those a try. Um, contact details are there as well. Um, friends, I mean, we are going through extraordinary times. We know that there's a lot of things going on in this world um, that if we allow ourselves we can just really become in, in an unproductive state so let's just try to go within and know that this is a vast universe um we will get through these things and just one moment at a time just following that inner guidance no matter where you're at now things have to change that's the one thing that we're promised in this life so just know that things will improve and things can improve and I just wish everybody peace and joy and blessings and just to just keep going. Let's do this together. We're going to get there. I promise. Yeah. I feel yeah, it. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Dr. Shelley, for everything you're doing. Thank you for making this mentally, emotionally, and spiritually available for people. Let's take a short break. Everybody we will be right back.